Hello, this is Tommy. Welcome back to Chatomics. So today I'm going to talk about some hidden skills for computational biology. Okay. So what are the essential skills for uh, computational biology? Of course, if you want to do computational biology, you need to have computational skills. So programming skills, those are very those are skills are very important. So you need to know Unix commands, R or Python and even how to uh, use those to write efficient code. However, there are other skills that I see as a valuable. First is patience. So what do I mean by uh, patience? So you need to spend enough time to do quality control before you uh, dive into the uh, analysis. Uh, for example, for single cell RNA sequencing data, you want to spend en enough time to remove those low quality cells because they may give you some weird results. For example, like uh, some a cluster with actually low counts. So uh, without actually uh, doing enough quality control, it actually can give you trouble uh, for downstream analysis. Uh, also, you need to spend enough time to understand the experimental design. For example, if uh, you know the experiments were carried out in different time, or a different day, and you might need to uh, uh, use uh, some methods such as batch correction to integrate the data. Or if you are reanalyzing the uh, data set from the published paper, make sure you read the paper. Try to understand what are the authors trying to uh, uh, ask, what questions the, the author is trying to ask, and uh, uh, how they use their data to, an to answer that question and how you can reuse that data to answer your own question. So do not just uh, download the data and dive into the analysis uh, without even uh, reading the paper because some conclusions from the paper may help you as well and uh, the description of the data sets will also help you uh, for, uh, for, for data analysis. So you really need to be a little bit patient. Uh, next, ex exploratory uh, data analysis. So uh, EDA or exploratory data analysis is a critical component of any uh, data analysis process. So sometimes you just need to look at the data with, with your eyes, which means you can just print out the uh, data frame uh, or the rows to, to see, okay, what value is actually available uh, in, the data, in the data frame, okay? And also do not assume for example, all samples are from cancer or adjacent normal or metastasis. So it can uh, come from uh, a different uh, conditions. So that's why if this data is from a, a published paper, you need to read the paper and the paper will describe uh, what kind of uh, data, uh, sample or tissues uh, uh, those samples are from, right? And of course, essentially, just what are the available values for, uh, for a column. So you can use the table function uh, uh, in R to, to, uh, take, uh, to take a look. And also for those uh, NA or not available uh, uh, data points, make sure uh, you do a sanity check or uh, you do like you look at those values with your eyes, okay? Whether they are all encoded as NA or N-A or sometimes just a hyphen. So you need to actually clean those data up before you do some uh, further analysis, okay? Are there any like duplicate rows in the data frame? So you can use, for example, dplyr a distinct function to find those duplicate rows. And finally, uh, principal component analysis, which is my favorite uh, to check patterns of data. Okay, next is about a sanity check. Uh, let me give you several examples about a sanity check. For example, if you have a, a group which has only five samples and you plot the box plot and you add the dots uh, on, overlay on, on the box plot. However, you only see four points and why you're missing one of them. So it's very likely you filter that sample out and then, or maybe you, when you do calculation then, and, and there's something wrong with your code. Okay, so make sure you go back and check your code and see why you're missing that value. Okay, and also the second is similar. Actually, if you see like in your box plot and also there are many dots actually with the same value, 
Uh, so usually that's get a little bit unusual, and uh, you, it's a little bit suspicious if you see like many data points with the same value. So you go back to the data frame and take a look the data that you, you used for for plotting. So what's going on? Why they are the same value? If they're indeed the same, uh, are they from the same samples? Right. So the uh, uh, third example here is actually it's actually related with the second example because uh, in this case when you're joining two tables and the table you are going to do left join with has actually multiple rows with the same key so when you join those two tables uh, the final table will actually have more rows than the original table so make sure you use uh, this dimension function in R to check the number of rows and columns. And so then you are aware, okay, maybe there are some duplicates. Again, uh, then you go back to my last slide. So there may be like some duplicate, duplicate uh, rows. So you you just use the distinct function or, uh, or um, find those like duplicate rows and look at those rows with your eyes, right? And next is, uh, about positive control and negative control, just like doing a wet lab experiments. So when you do, are doing data analysis, you also want to have some positive control and negative control in mind. For example, if you uh, if you uh, uh, you if you're doing a gene expression analysis after T cell activation, and and we know, for example, those uh, T cell activation markers, for example, uh, PD one. Uh, or, or exhaustion markers such as here for they may come up, right? So those are po your positive controls. And if you don't see that, and maybe it's uh, your data analysis is wrong, or maybe the experiment is not carried out correctly. So, uh, so again, does the results make any biological sense, right? So you always uh, want to talk uh, to a uh, biology ex expert and to uh, understand whether uh, the result that you have is making any biological sense. And lastly, this example, so uh, about sample swap. And if you have, for example, uh, multiple samples and, and, and then for a particular sample, you know it's a female sample, like just by the label. However, uh, when you are doing mutation calling in this case, and then you see, you see uh, actually mutants, uh, the, the variants actually uh, in the Y chromosome. And there's something wrong with that. So maybe people just mislabel the sample and you need to go back and check the data and also check with the uh, experiment, uh, uh, who carry out the experiments and see whether they did make a mistake. Okay, standing check is very important. So when, once you actually have done enough data analysis, you have this sense of data and then you always do a standing check. So when you are doing the data analysis. Lastly, is about independent uh, thinking. So, and so once you uh, master the basic skills like uh, Unix, Python, and R, it's actually not that difficult for you to learn a new data type analysis. And you just need to fo follow some tutorials for specific data uh, type. However, do not blindly follow the tutorial, right? Always think if the method is suitable for the task uh, at hand or not, right? For example, if you are uh, doing single cell RNA sequencing analysis, whether you want to do like a data integration or not, it really depends on the question you're asking. So uh, independent thinking. So you do not always just blindly follow uh, the tutorials. Okay. I think those are the uh, several uh, skills that I think are really important. Uh, for computational biology, so in addition to the essential skills like programming, okay? So that's it for today. Click, click subscribe if you like this content and thank you, happy learning, and we'll see you next time.